Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Derek. From WebWarrior.net. Based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tonight on the Screensavers. See how the FCC is going to have you watch TV differently. Plus, we're going to explain the crazy, confusing world of digital TV. And turn your computer into a high-definition television. Live, Live from, from the Tech, Tech TV studios, studios in San Francisco, Francisco it's, it's the Screensavers! Yes, sir. Patrick Norton. And I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. No, you're not. No, I'm not. Weren't they great, though? Derek and Joe from uh, webwarrior.net. And you know what? you got to check this site out. This is actually a neat site. It's, uh, it's no, no ads. They do it out of their own home for their love of it. And it's just kind of a hangout for geeks. Cool. Very cool place. Very nice. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join right up. They're using PostNuke, which I like a lot. That's a neat uh, Post content. Post say. No, PostNuke. Yeah. PostNuke. Hey, you came here for a good day. This is a great day. You know what this is? TV day on the screensavers. We're talking everything. I mean everything having to do with the new digital television. You are going to have to buy a new TV in the next couple of years. You don't have to, but well. you're going to want to, and we're going to talk about it. In fact, I'll tell you what let's do. Fufu is going to clear the lines right now. He's going to clear the phone lines so that, is that okay, Fufu? It's closed. They've closed the lines. Closed. We're starting all over, and we're only going to take calls. We've got room for a couple more calls on digital television. Exactly, yep. yep. Buying, if you want to know more about it, how to do it at home, whatever, that's what we're going to cover today. Call Fufu, 888-989-7879. We should think about getting that number, 1-800-FUFU, call Fufu. <laughs> I bet it's available. <laughs> I'll check right now. Uh, let's Would you please? 1-800-FUFU. <laughs> Dial a Fufu. <laughs> Let's start before we go any farther with the top technology right. stories. And as it turns out, in a wacky coincidence, the, the top story of the day has to do with digital TV. Sony, dun, dun, dun. Sony was at CES as a number of companies were with these new blue lasers. Hey, this is a thin tie-in digital TV. Oh, I think this not, my friend. Story, though. I think not. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, you, if you think about it, if you've got high-definition television, it takes 20 or 30 gigabytes uh, for a two-hour movie. It takes far more than you could fit on a DVD, far more than you could fit on anything that we know today. But thanks to the blue laser, you're going to have DVD recorders starting, get ready, next month that will allow you to record onto a DVD. 23 gigabytes. 23 gigs per disc. Per disc. Per layer per disc, we should say. The blue, because it's a blue laser, the wavelength is different, allows you to record more layers on the same disc. The Sony thing I've read says it's 23 gigabytes That's a, lot. a disc. That's a lot. This is, everybody's going to do this. It's a standard. Uh, don't run to the store yet. The, uh, the first one uh, will be 450,000 yen, which is, I think, 38 million $3,800. Oh, $3,800. Yeah. Okay, close enough. <laughs> $38 million, you get a small island in Fiji. $3,800, you get the blue laser. It's about nine times more than the red laser DVD recorders in Japan. Uh -huh. um, so, but I think this is the beginning of, and you need it, if you're gonna, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to be talking about. This high-definition TV so you're saying if you want a lot record of record HDTV live to a disc, you're going to need to see me. I just want this so I can finally back up. Your hard drive. Something other than 73 Your individual That's right. CDRs or the uh, the um, The DVDs. current only way to record HDTV right now is this digital VHS format, mm -hmm. which is kind of a funky format. Or you format. could record it to a hard drive. You could. You, you could. could. Toshiba also has a competing blue laser format. They say will cost less. So get ready for the blue laser wars, which is right after the clone wars. Is it going to be DVD dash blue dash yeah, R, DVD dash blue dash plus R, DVD minus <laughs> dash blue dash. Question of the day. TV day. Yes. Today we're going to be talking your ears off about ACTV and everything else that's digital about television. So we thought we'd start the show by asking you, are you convinced that you need this new fangled HD TV? Keep it simple, folks. A yes or no. Go vote at thescreensavers.com. And don't forget to let us know what you think about this whole... Leo? I tell you what. <laughs> Mr. Cutter! Mr. Cutter! I tell you what. Let's have you vote now. Right. Watch the show. And then vote again. Okay. Because your vote may change. We, we can ask the same question tomorrow. Your vote may change. It may. Between now and then. Because you're going to learn everything you want to know about HDTV. So don't go anywhere, folks. Coming up.
everything you wanted to know starting after the break with the FCC. They're the ones that kicked the ball off by requiring that all broadcast uh, television stations go digital in the next couple of years. The, the uh, chief of the task force of digital TV task force for the FCC joins us when the screen savers continues. As you may know, the FCC is requiring all television broadcasters go digital in the next couple of years. What does it mean for you and me to find out? We thought we'd bring the expert, the chair of FCC's Digital Television Task Force, Rick Chesson in. He's in our satellite bureau in Washington, D.C. Rick, thanks for joining us this evening on the Screensavers. Welcome. It's nice to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, how long have you been working on this digital television conversion? Well, I've been working on it for a few years. The FCC has been working on it for about uh, 15, 16 years now. Something the commission's 19... wanted to do for a while. Yeah, it's, it, uh, it was something the broadcasters wanted to do and what uh, Congress also asked the FCC to do. And so the FCC has been uh, sort of shepherding the transition from analog to digital. Uh, it's really part of the whole digital migration that you see in all communication sectors. Absolutely. It's not just broadcasting, but uh, cable, satellite, every... every Every communications technology we regulate is, is moving to digital. What is the time frame for the conversion? Well, right now Congress has mandated that the transition be over at the end of 2006 as a target date. And it's important to stress that because there's a big exception in the law that if most people in a particular market haven't made the switch yet, that date can be extended. Uh, the magic number is 85%. So until 85% of people in any market have made the switch, that date can be extended, uh, extended past 2006. When you say people, though, you're not talking about you and me, consumers of television, you're talking about broadcasters, is that right? No, I'm talking about consumers. Until consumers have the equipment in their homes to be oh. able to watch the digital signals, that 2006 date can be extended. So the 85% figure is really consumers. Why go digital? I mean, obviously, uh, there are benefits to going digital, but why is the government saying, we want to go digital? Well, there's lots of reasons. Um, first of all, there are going to be tremendous new services for consumers. Um, a lot of people have seen high definition, but there's other services in the offing, like multiple program streams over the same uh, spectrum that they do one now in analog. Um, we'll have interactive services. Also, the government is interested in moving to digital because it's much more efficient. And so what we can do at the end of the day is take back about 25% of the spectrum we use for broadcasting right now. And that spectrum can be used for new other wireless services and public safety services that are really urgently needed. It actually could be a, a financial windfall for the government since they can auction off this additional spectrum. Is that right? The government can auction off some of that additional spectrum for new wireless commercial uses, right. but it won't be auctioned for police, fire, ambulance, right. uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, we, we, don't make the, we don't make the police buy spectrum at this point. Right. Thank goodness. So what is, what, what is going on right now? I know in our, in our market, in most markets, there are some digital broadcasts, uh, you know, terrestrial uh, television stations did digital, some aren't. What, what does it look like right now? Well, it's really been a tremendous uh, surge in the last year. About a year ago, we had about 200 stations nationwide on the air. Today, we have over 850 broadcasters on the air broadcasting digital signals nationwide. If in some of the bigger markets like San Francisco and Washington, you have many, many stations on the air broadcasting in digital. A lot of them are doing high definition uh -huh. uh, signals like CBS and ABC and NBC. So um, it's really been uh, a year of picking up momentum, I think. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, wait a minute, I'm already digital. I'm watching Dish or DirecTV or I have a digital cable box. Aren't those people already digital? Well, that's a, a form of digital. Basically, that uses digital technology to send the TV signals to your set-top box. Right. From there, the set-top box, though, has to convert it. If you don't have a digital television set, if you just have a regular old analog set, it has to convert it down to analog so you can watch it. So you don't get the full benefits of digital television like high definition with those kind of digital products unless you have the right kind of set-top box and the right kind of set. There's a, certainly a big investment in this kind of a major shift. Broadcasters have to change all of their equipment out. Uh, consumers have to buy new TVs. Do I have to buy a new TV now? Rick, is that what the FCC is telling me? 
No, you don't have to buy a new TV. Uh, at the end of the transition, even if the whole thing switched over, until the transition's over, by the way, the analog signals will continue to be broadcast, so you don't need to change your life at all. Okay. At the end of the transition, if you receive your signals over the air, you'll need to buy some sort of converter box, which we expect will be relatively inexpensive by that point, in order to receive the digital signals and convert it for use on your analog box. If you're a cable or satellite subscriber, you'll probably be fine, especially if you have a set-top box already. In many cases, they're already digital. What about uh, the broadcasters? Are they resisting? Because don't they have to buy all new infrastructure? There is a substantial investment on the broadcasters' part, and uh, again, most of them are, are making it. It's uh, costing them, uh, you know, millions of dollars to, to switch out. Right. Uh, they have to buy not only new transmitters, but if they're going to do local news, for instance, they're going to have to do studio equipment and trucks and cameras, and uh, it's pretty much a, uh, a major build-out for them as well. You said an interesting thing. Some will do high-def HDTV broadcasts, but it doesn't have to be HDTV. What other things are they doing with this uh, in enhanced bandwidth? Well, some of them uh, are doing what we call multicasting, which is over that same spectrum that you can do one super sharp high definition picture, you can also do multiple what we call standard definition or lower resolution pictures. Um, How many for instance, per channel? About five to six. Wow. Depending on the quality. So maybe during uh, the day when it's soap operas and nobody cares if it's high def, I could do five different programs and then at night when it's the big, you know, big game or the big movie, I go to high def? Is that what exactly. they anticipate doing? Exactly. One yeah. broadcaster, for instance, has a 24-hour news channel uh, in standard definition, and they use the rest of the spectrum. They can even squeeze in a high-definition channel on the rest of their spectrum. So there's all sorts of uh, flexibility with digital that you didn't have in analog. Are we on target for 2006 for the conversion? Well, it's a it's a market by market thing, and it's it's hard to predict. But you know, I think that this thing is really set to take off in the next year or so. And uh, the pieces are finally come together. It's hard to predict exactly where we'll be in 2006, but uh, I think we'll be well on our way. We're on our way, and that's what we're going to cover in the rest of this hour is what it's going to look like in this new digital world. Rick Chesson, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Rick is the chair of the uh, Digital Television Task Force with the Federal Communications Commission. You can learn more about this at the DTV site at FCC.gov or we'll link uh, to it from our own site, thescreensavers.com. So now you see what the picture looks like. We're brewing up some HDTV. First of all, we're going to find out how you can make one out of your own PC. It might be the cheapest way to go high def. And coming up next, everything you need to know from a consumer point of view about digital televisions, the things you were afraid to ask, perhaps, when the screensavers continue. the screen savers well now we got the stage set we talked to the FCC they said yes it's happening you got a few years sounds like you're gonna want to buy a new TV and how's it gonna change the way you watch and what are you gonna get we got fortunately an expert to help us out with this John Johnson is editor-in-chief of secrets of home theater and high fidelity.com which is home theater high fi.com right a really great site that explains all of this you've been on a call for help a couple of times and I've loved you then and you do the Q&A column in there I thought who better than John to explain all of this. First of all, is this good news for consumers? Yeah, it's excellent news con for consumers because high def TV is so much better than what we've had over the past 50 years. And once they see it, they're going to take their old TVs and just toss them in the dumpsters. I got to tell you, though, a lot of consumers like me say, well, you know, I don't mind this bad. I only have a 20 inch TV at home. I don't care. I don't want to spend four grand on a new TV. They're, they're kind of irate that they feel like they have to buy a new TV. Do we have to buy a new TV? You will have to buy a new TV if you want to watch high definition yes. TV. So but if you want that quality, you've got to pay for it. That's right. And, uh, but actually, there are some uh, high-def TVs that are on the market now for just a couple of thousand dollars. Are they going to get cheaper in two years, three years, as uh, more people buy it? I don't think so. I think the really good quality ones are going to stay up in the four to $5,000 range. See, that's a lot for me, because I grew up with a TV cost 150 bucks. But it doesn't look like this. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, all right. So if I'm, if I'm somebody who really wants a great look at picture, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet and spend a couple of grand on a good TV. If I don't care, 
can I just, it sounded like Rick said I could just buy a, a converter box or something like that. Will there be a, a path for me to keep my old TV? Oh, yes. There will be converter boxes that will down-convert the high-def signal to just the standard kind of images that we've always watched. Now, I won't get, obviously, HD TV. But if a broadcaster is giving me four channels of I Love Lucy, will I be able to see those four channels? In other words, am I going to get more channels out of it? Uh, when it's converted to high def, you yeah. mean? No, no, when I get the little converter box and the oh, broadcasters yes. have all gone digital. The box will handle that. The box will be able to convert all the channels. So it'll be like 4A, B, C, D, E, yes. something like that. Yes. Okay, so I will get some of that benefit. I just, well, what, what will happen if I look at a high def broadcast? This may, you never, probably nobody ever asked you this. If I look at a high def broadcast on my old Philco with this converter box, what am I going to see? Am I see anything? You'll see what you used to see, just a standard kind of a... So it'll be okay. It'll be okay. If you're but happy with your junky old TV, you don't have to change, I guess. You'll be happy with it as long as you don't see a high-definition TV signal. All right. <laughs> now, you're coming from the other side. You see it all. What's so great about this? Tell me what, what the benefits are. Well, if you compare just a standard television image to a high-definition high image, it's like looking out a window at the scene. Right. It's like being in one of those million-dollar boxes at the football game, looking out the window at the game rather than watching TV. It is so detailed. You can see pores on people's faces. You can see grains of sand on the beach. I mean, it's not just sharpness. It, the depth of the color is so much better that once you see it, there's no, no returning. This is an HD t capable TV. It's capable TV. Capable is like cable ready. It doesn't mean it can do it. You still have to get the extra box, right? You need a converter box with this type of television, which is called a flat panel screen. Right. Uh, a lot of the high definition TVs come with the tuners already built in. Well, nowadays they're coming with them built in. Most of them so are. So that's yes. something to inquire about. Do I need to buy an extra box to convert the. What you'll probably find is that the conventional rear projection TV that most people have, the big screen TV, right, those, the will have the, last year. <laughs> those will have the tuners built in, right. but a flat panel will not have a tuner built in. You need a cable box no, like this one. There's no room. This is a digital cable box, so this is the kind of thing. This one's for direct TV, so this is the kind of thing. You'll need a new dish, too, though, right? You need a 3 LNB dish? You so. need a, a dish that has, well, for direct TV, you need a dish that has 3 LNBs on it because right. there's 3 satellites up there that are now broadcasting high def. Okay. They're introducing ESPN on high def, and there'll right. be some other stuff that's coming. So too. you would buy, how much is the satellite this is This is this is six ninety nine from Zenith. Well, that's not bad. It's not bad. So it's that becomes bad. your satellite box. That becomes a satellite box, and what you do is you plug in the back of this. The difference between what we've had up until now and this year is this connection right here. All right. Well, let's save that because we're going to do a buying guide a little later on. But this, uh, we're going to save that DVI connection. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. You're going to give us a little buying guide. Right. But I understand a little bit better now what I, I'm involved with. If, if I'm watching broadcast, I would need a box like this as well. For high def, the bottom line is if you're buying a flat panel TV like this, which yep. is very cool because it's only four inches thick, you'll need, this. you'll need a satellite box. And if too. you're buying one that has a big, big screen foot TV, print, you'll probably have the tuners the, already the built in. in. And that's true for uh, satellite broadcasts or or broadcast cable or, or over cable. the air. Okay. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the different kinds of television in a little bit. The DLP, the rear projector, the CRT, all the different kinds of TVs. What to look for when you're shopping. What this transition is going to mean to you in just a little bit because John's going to come back and tell you everything you need to know about buying a new digital TV. But don't go anywhere because coming up, Megan's going to set you up with everything you need for your OS 10 desktop so you can watch, not watch TV, but find out what's going to be on your HDF TV. And still to come, <laughs> Don't burn a pile of cash on an HD TV. Hey, 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 watch, watch it with that flame there. We're going to show you how to turn your PC into one right after this web tip from Megan. <laughs> I could use some of that cash. Are you confused about EXEs, AIFs, and NTRs? I am. But you can go to whatis.com and then scroll down the page to a little link that says every file format in the world. Click on it and you'll go to a page that has them alphabetically organized so you'll never be confused again. We'll be right back, so please, please do stay with us. Screensavers. Leo Laporte here coming up in this uh, next half hour. Megan's going to show you some Sherlock channels, some really cool. Sherlock is great in 10.2. It's a whole new thing. <laughs> a whole new ball A game. TV guide. And of course, John's going to come back and give you the scoop on buying a TV. This one I'm dying for because like, like I think most people, 
we're ready to kind of go into the market. You don't want to spend two grand on HDTV, though. I don't have two grand. I would pay off my car loan if I have well, how much? Well, how much does this solution? Because you got a good yes. monitor on your computer. You got and I, 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 and I should admit, I actually used a 21-inch computer monitor to watch videos for like four years at one point. Not bad. I mean, Not those bad. those are very high-resolution, high-quality monitors. Yeah, DVDs look so much better in the progressive scan. Let's stroll over here. What you have your hands on here is the Hypix DTV 200. It's from Telemann. It costs around $400. Doesn't sound cheap until you compare it to say a set top 700 like a $700 set top box there are some cards coming out around $300 but before we even talk about putting this inside of your computer let's step over here let's take a look up on a website okay. here titantv.com is what I use now I basically dialed is this, in this is your program guy this is my program guy but it's a really nice thing if you don't have HDTV yet it's a really nice thing to take a look at that you know something oh wait here we have one you put in your zip code and you can see which oh look exactly the little you know the <laughs> Okay, I'm going to explain the obvious for the folks at home. So little red HDs mean a high definition. Got it. Now, basically, got we've got, this is during the day. Almost nothing is in there during the day. I'm going to scroll up and kick it to 8 p.m. tonight, and you should see a whole sea, a veritable flood of little HDs. Well, before you even consider there. upgrading, you should look at this to make sure that there's any programming in your neck of the woods that you can watch. And that's going to roll over. Now, this over. is broadcast that we're talking about here. Yes. Uh, and that's different from satellite and mm -hmm. cable, so you should mm -hmm. check your cable or satellite mm -hmm. listings there. But there are a lot of broadcasters in the metros anyway that are doing high def broadcasts. There are a lot of broadcasters and there's it's still not the you know first thing you want to do is, is we brought this out. site down already. Yeah. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> that took Folks, seconds. Wait till we're done with this segment before you rush to the Please. sites we talk about. <laughs> Just once. <laughs> Anyhow. So once you've determined that broadcasters uh, there's another website online called absforum.com. ABS I Forum love is ABS an extraordinary Forum. place yeah. to get information. They have a whole section and, and I didn't give the specific link. I, I goofed on the web article. I got to send the web team the specific link. They have a whole section just talks about finding out how the broadcast reception, the broadcast HDTV reception is in your area. This is a great place to lurk, ask questions, learn, and find out. Because we're not, even even if you just get the card, you know, it's still 400 bucks. That's well, we're across the street from uh, the big HDTV broadcaster in San Francisco, but we're inside. We can barely get a signal. Yeah, and, and they even line of sight. I, I had someone, you remember uh, my buddy who shall remain nameless at CES, who's like, you don't understand! I know, I know. You live in San Francisco! Everything's HDTV. We have hills, people. You can move 175 yards in this town and not be able to get any broadcast reception unless the radio somebody like takes the radio tower and bends it into your neighborhood so let's say i've done all my research i know this. i've got an hd signal okay. i know i've got stuff i want to see how can i put hd in my computer it's pretty simple the installations you know there's, there's there were no this instructions in the box this is right? a decoder what this is this decoder? Card we actually have it in there what it does is it takes a signal in right we have a broadcast signal and that could in. come from an antenna it come an antenna or you can bring it in through a cable antenna in there okay Basically, and then it does a video overlay. It uses some software now, inside of here. Before you plug your cable in here, you should understand that yeah. cable is a whole other matter on high def and cable. Yes. And you'll probably need to buy a cable digital decoder box. Most of us will be. If you still have your old school broadcast this UHF works. antenna on the roof, this, this one works. I picked this up for a whopping nine. This is not the recommended Wait, UHF. Are you saying antenna. that HDTV is a UHF? It's up in the UHF frequencies. Use a UHF antenna. There's two antennas that are recommended: a Turk 55 and one from Zenith. We got links to both. Those on the website. Those are, you could spend a hundred bucks and get no, a better. No, actually, you could spend thirty-five bucks oh, and get bad. a highly recommended directional okay. antenna. I spent nine ninety-five. This one's also a night light, which you can't really Very see. Handy. I thought that was great. Very handy, and it looks cool. <laughs> it looks stylish sitting up on there. So and you've now, got the card. You've got, got the, the antenna. Card. You plug the antenna into the card. The card takes the signal and converts it, just like a TV tuner. Exactly. Card. Does this work as a standard TV tuner card as well, um, or is it? Oh, it's only HD. You know, I've never even bothered to try, Leo. I I've been so focused on HDTV. It says it does NTSC. Which well, is then the I'm standard. sure. It does. Yeah. I'm so ashamed. I didn't even Ooh, bother to look. That looks good. That does look good. This is actually when we got a good clean signal. If you take a look at that, of course, folks at home, it's coming through as being a scan converted. It's going to look exactly like over. your regular TV. Exactly. Oh, I guess we couldn't get the scan conversion on that. This, but I got to tell you, sitting here, actually, turn it around so that the, the <laughs> see, audience. See what I just did is I just actually turned the. If I move the antenna, bad things happen. That's it's another thing to understand. With any digital broadcast, it either works. How's it or looking, doesn't folks? Work. It looks good. Audience, thumbs up, thumbs down. Is that beautiful? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're doing DD7 hey, uh, infomercials. It's just locked up. But it's <laughs> now, how much would you pay? <laughs> oh, but look at down, that! Because you'll also get the scrub change in the guard at Buckingham Palace. So this actually looks pretty good. We got a caller. What's the caller's name? Uh, there, we got a caller. Josh in the line from Sierra Vista, Arizona. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Are you there, Josh? Josh? We've lost him. He Anyone? wanted to know. He oh. wanted. Are you there now? No. He wanted to know though about the audio. 
Because it's one thing to have right. HD TV. Right. Now this thing it says does Dolby Digital Audio Output. So which what does that mean? Because HD TV is essentially is they use AC3, which is Dolby Digital's audio compression. That's in the signal. Exactly. It's in the signal. It's really funny. I was telling you before, right? Do you know where they code AC3 information on the movie films that they no, play where? at the theater in between the sprocket holes? Well, there you go. I have no idea where they carry the audio <laughs> signal on an HD TV broadcast. But what they do actually There's put in there. There's plenty of bandwidth. I'm sure they can Plenty of bandwidth. What they do, you can actually some places are actually doing full Dolby surround, but most of them are just doing using it to carry stereo information. So this is again a case where. I'd want a Dolby decoder external. If you're going to do 5.1 surround sound, yes, you would need either a, you would basically you would need an external decoder to process that for stereo. Does this, this have actually runs digital it, out or is it is it? A, in this particular case, I'm just using stereo out from okay. the PC itself. But this card also has audio out, but it's it says. I'll even show you the little add-on yeah. gadget. Oh, it's a little doohickey. Yeah, there's is actually it, a second board. I didn't bother to install this. Yeah, we actually have the audio and the audio output. There you go. All right, and you do have a spitif. That would be the one right there, All AC3 right. output. Awesome. So you, so that's what you would do. You'd hook that up to Adobe Digital Decoder. Then you've got surround sound. Right. You've got HDTV. You'll mm -hmm. never leave your computer room. Well, I have to tell you, even on this monitor, and this is not a big monitor, this is a great looking picture. And I got to yeah, I, Chris. I prefer progressive scan even for DVD playback. Now, you know, the, the place we live in now, we've got like a 27 inch television. Oh, so we can hear that. Here and here we are in the beautiful. The week. And this is a funny channel. It's actually the local, most local PBS what stations broadcast HDTV programming. You know, Look how good this day. is. They need special it's cameras, of course, so not all broadcasts will be in HD. And Ours will never be in HD because Patrick and I have it in our contract. Exactly, yeah. because we look really <laughs> ugly with this kind of detail. What we also point out is it would look even better if we had a higher resolution running here. We've had to, because to actually show it on our television Oh, it could even system, be better. We actually had to reduce the size Very of cool. the desktop down to 8 400 bucks. it's high picks. It's, boy, that's about bucks. the cheapest way. You don't need a new monitor. You don't need anything. There are some new cards coming out for around $320. We're going to get those into the labs and see what they Very think, cool. how they compare. So, the cheap way to try HD anyway, if yeah. you're going to get it from broadcast, not for satellite, not for cable, for broadcast, this would be the cheap way to do it. Tell them on. Stay where you are, folks. Learn to buy the best TV out there, and we demystify the mess of cords behind your television set. What do all those connectors do <laughs> in just a little bit? But up next, we'll show you how to get TV schedules and more using Sherlock. No kidding, Sherlock, when the screensavers <laughs> continue. Screensavers, let's check in. Megan, yes. congratulations. Oh, thank She's you. She's a new aunt. I am a new aunt. My sister had a little baby, Hayden Wells Bonner. It was today. confusing for your folks, I know, because yes. you're both having babies within right. like a couple of weeks of each exactly. other. Exactly. Thank goodness she won the race. Yeah, she did. She <laughs> went, she's older and she had the baby first. <laughs> but you're, you're next. Any, I'm next. And for those watching, any minute now. Any, any could be any, right Could now. be now. We're waiting. We've got an ambulance standing by outside. <laughs> However, she However, is a hard-working woman. Is not giving talk, up. No kidding. We're going to talk about Sherlock. No kidding. No kidding, Sherlock. Sherlock. This is uh, not lately? your grandfather, Sherlock. No, this is not your grandfather, Sherlock. This, this is brand new with Jaguar. It's. I mean, Sherlock always would help you find your files and everything. Doesn't do that at all anymore. No. No, you don't need it because it's got all these cool things. It's got flights. Show and me what it This does. is first because it's TV day. I wanted to show you. These are all channels, right? Yes, these are channels. And they come with the movies channel. It comes with the stocks, the yellow pages, eBay. But I've added a few that people have created. TV is a new channel? T yes, this is created by Ben Moore, and it's his TV channel. And so you can look through. And uh, I've added our zip code here and chosen Comcast Digital Cable. And look there. There's look the screen at, savers. Yeah, the screen savers right here. You know, people are going to be watching bull riding right now instead of the screen saver. Bit. Don't tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> we just lost half our audience. <laughs> bull riding. They're all going to watch bull riding. <laughs> and if you're not into TV, which I would beg the question why you're watching this, we have Sarah Wilkins Gutenberg Project. This channel. is the this public is, domain books yes, project. Yes, all online text that so you can like search for Jane Austen and search for all great. her works, and you this can just double great. click and it pops up a browser window where wow. you can read. Very cool. I had no idea she wrote everything you wanted to know about sex. That's, <laughs> no, that's new kidding, to me. Sherlock. 
block. <laughs> yes. So this is, so this opened a website. It, yeah, this goes to a website. Okay. But uh, yeah, the the, what, the flights thing on here is very cool. I think we've shown this before, but I think it's amazing. I love you this. You can actually see the map of where the flight is. I mean, you can find that on a website. But this is all here. In, so it'll show the flight in place. progress. And mm -hmm. all that stuff. Exactly. Sherlock, these channels. How do I get them? Well, you can get them at thescreensavers.com or Sherlockers.com. And if you don't like these, I also have a link to the SDK if you want to develop your own right, channels. Your own. Yeah, for the it's the developers kit for Sherlock. Write your Very own good. and spread the word. Very Someone good. Someone should make us a little screen. You should make us a little screensavers. What would it have in it? Well, I don't know. We all can the have fun Megan's stuff. baby watch. Yeah. We can have a little get on that time. and quick. Yeah, Could be hurry. any <laughs> second now. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Screensavers.com for links. Let's check in right now with the folks at Tech Live. They're preparing a fantastic show for us tonight. Fantastic. Michaela Pereira is at the Tech Live. How'd you know studios. that? Because it's always fantastic. <laughs> we, we pride ourselves on being just fantastic. I'm a fan. Well, if you're a fan, you're going to like tonight's show then. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. I don't either, like... but I love it. <laughs> I'm just going to stop. Okay. Listen, uh, the 75th Annual Academy Awards still a couple of weeks away. Time to plan your big party and send me the invite. But... Oscars have already been handed out to some of the behind-the-scenes players. In fact, Vixen Kate Hudson hosted the SciTech Awards over the weekend in La La Land. The event pays tribute to those in Hollywood whose work doesn't exactly land them in the spotlight every day. Kind of a nice way to say the high-tech geeks who make the stuff we see make it seem possible, all that cool, cool stuff we see in the movies. In any case, we were there, we spoke to Miss Hudson and others, and we're going to bring you all of that right after the screensavers. I just flew in from L.A., and boy, are my arms tired. Hi, do, you know, <laughs> do you know to this day that is my favorite joke, and I use it at... Do you just, still laugh? Oh, my God. At the drop of a hat. And people never laugh at me when I say it, but I just love it. I got a new one for you you can try out. Okay. I just flew in the coast, and boy, is my hair tired. All right, so I'll see you later. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. <laughs> and that's what's coming up on Tech Live right after this show. I thought it was funny. Badger. We want to invite you to register for the Screensavers LAN parties coming up Thursday, powered by NVIDIA. And it's magic hair. This LAN party is going to be, and I quote, hooked up, yo. What does that mean? Is that, the, is that how the kids talk? I think today? it's off the hook, maybe. They okay. Mean. Anyhow, it's a full version of Half-Life Counter-Strike, and you'll be playing against the current Counter-Strike World Champions, Team 3D. Team 3D. Ooh. So if you think you got the moxie to challenge those guys and gals, go to our website and click on Join Our LAN Party to register and to get the links to download the game. It's going to be fun. That's we'll this see Thursday. You Thursday. March 6th. 6th. Screensavers LAN Party. Yeah. Okay, we got a lot more Screensavers TV action on its way. It is TV day after the break. We're going to show you what you need to know to buy. This is the most important segment of all. What to do if you're on the market You've for a new... For this I am, because I'm ready to buy. Right after a tip from our web goddess, Nicole. <laughs> you want to change your file associations? Well, here's how in Windows XP. You're going to click on Tools, scroll down to Folder Options, then you're going to click File Types. We're going to have to wait a minute here for our, our connection, but then you're going to select. <laughs> go ahead and select any file type you like, and then click Change, so you can pick the perfect program to run your file. So stay put. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Screen Savers. All right, digital TV is coming soon. You saw earlier on FCC says it's going to happen. Patrick showed you how you could turn your PC into an HD TV. But really, for most of us, all this means is it's time to go to the circuit cities or the good guys or the best buys of the world and say, I need a new TV. And if you've tried it, you've probably been overwhelmed. John Johnson is back from a, a hometheaterhifi.com. Exactly. I get it right? That's right. All right. right. What are all the different kinds? Of, we're looking at plasma. We're looking at what? Tell me all the different kinds of TVs. All right. Well, the most common type is what we've had up to now, which is the CRT. CRT. Type, it's a tube. Had, like a big screen TV with a red, green, and blue picture tubes in How big can that get? Ten feet. Ten feet? Ten feet. Ten. Oh, they can get big. Right. Okay. And then, but the most uh, common type that I've seen now in the stores, and I just went a couple of days ago, is, is a three-panel LCD rear projection That's TV. what you have at home. That's what I have at home. And you like that? I like it. Yeah. That Sony makes them. Is there anybody else besides Sony making oh, those? Oh, yeah, sure. Lots made, of companies. All of the ma major manufacturers have LCD rear projection big TVs. So they're, they're kind of like this one where it's a, I don't know if you can see, but that's a big rear projection. It's, it's deep, but not that deep. 
No. Not as deep as a CRT, the, probably. The LCD panel uh, rear projection TVs are only about 18 inches. Not bad. 18, 10, 18 inches deep. Now, when I was at CES in January, the ones I liked the best were DLP, this digital light projection. Right. From, uh, in fact, I've been using one uh, at home that's a, a projector. Right. Do you like DLPs? Yes, I do. Uh, the only problem I found with them is that because, because DLPs are so expensive, you'll find, get a projector like this that only has one DLP uh, right. uh, panel in it, whereas we the LCD types have three panels in it, one for each of the colors, red, red green, green, and blue. blue. So you get better color separation, better richness. What does it look like? You get better color separation uh, uh, with the LCD panel, uh, but you get better blacks with a DLP. Oh, that's a, Actually, we have an illustration of how a DLP works. So you can exp If we take a look here, you can see it has a color wheel is how it separates the red, green, and blue from that one chip. Is right. that right? You have the light source that you can see down at the bottom. That's like a projection bulb, and it goes through a lens which focuses it through a spinning wheel which has red, green, and blue panels on it, and then that bounces off this DMD device, which is part of the DLP. That's like a mirror. It's like a million tiny mirrors which either turn on or off to reflect the image. Yeah, oh, so that's in the sequence, red, green, and blue. Then that, that's that, the, the dots then of the television. And it picture. goes through the projection lens right onto your screen. Okay. I've been using this and I like how it looks, but you say the, the blacks are better, but the color's not as saturated as the LCD panels? Well, because the panel has to project both uh, all the three colors, right. you end up with certain kinds of artifacts, such as the rainbow effect, which some people complain about. Don't some tell me about the some rainbow people don't effect. I don't want to hear it because it's going to ruin my enjoyment. <laughs> We've also, there's other, there's like uh, LCOS, and there's others. Kinda, right. Anything I should be looking for down the road? Well, I think what you'll find is probably the greatest selection in the LCD panel type. And that's what we had, and we were showing you here. This is an LCD panel. We've turned it around. Right, but this we'll is a single LCD flat panel. That's one of the advantages. Just like on your computer, it's thin. It's very thin. These are expensive, though. Yeah, this one's about $5,000, which is from Zenith. Okay. But it has the right connections for you to view the signal digitally, which we can talk about in a second. Now, Patrick used a word, and I want to actually have a caller uh, on the line. What, what, what's the caller's name? We have a caller on the line. What's the caller's name? I'll try it again. Just see if they. Josh is on the line. Hey, Josh, are you there? This is never going to work, is it? It's Mark. Mark. Martin. Bart. 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 Bart Simpson's on the line. Hey, Bart, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. You heard the same word with Patrick used. What is that that you wanted to know? Well, first of all, I want to. Uh, one of the best days of my life was when I got my satellite system and I could get Tech TV. So I just want to thank you guys. Yay, for Bart! Where are you? You're in Jacksonville. Yes, Jacksonville. All right. Thank you for watching us in Jacksonville. We appreciate. Yeah, it. what I wanted to ask you was um, progressive scan. That's what the exactly word he used. does that have to do with uh, HD TV and plasma displays and, and that kind of stuff? Great question. Patrick used it too. What is progressive scan? Well, the way we've been watching TV for the past half a century is what's called interlaced television. And the, the, the image is formed by, the, uh, by scanning from left to right, the top light to bottom. The moves across the screen, right. draws the screen, goes back up to the top. And it draws 480 lines with conventional television. So it draws the first half and then the second half, that, odd numbers and even numbers. That's the difference between interlaced and progressive. Is, is with interlaced TV, first the odd numbered lines, 1, 3, 5, 7, up to, right. uh, to 479, right. are drawn. And then the even numbered lines, 2, 4, 6, 8, up to 480. And that's called interlaced television. It takes two passes to do one picture. It takes two passes to do one picture. What's and better about pro Progressive does it all in one pass? Progressive draws lines 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 all the way up to 480. What's the result? The result is that you don't see the scan lines. Okay, so I don't see the scan lines. In a regular TV, do you see scan lines? You'll see the scan lines, particularly in moving images, if you, if you get up close. Okay. You, you can so you see get it. a crisper, more solid picture without any scan lines. That's it. right. Okay. And one of the aspects of high-definition TV is called 720p. That, yeah, that now, now this is, I've seen all these numbers. There's, there's 480i, 480p, 720p, and 1080i. Actually, there are 18 formats it's more for, than digi that? for digital television. <laughs> Here is a list of some of the basic ones. The TV you're watching right now is interlaced 480 lines, right? 480 lines And it's 4 by 3 aspect ratio. 4 by 3, and the aspect ratio means the width divided by the height. So that's what you're watching now. HDTV goes to this new 16 by 9, which is more like a cinemascope. In fact, this is the ratio that most movies use, right? This is the called the Academy ratio, actually, which is a 16 by 9 or okay. 1.85 to 1. And that could either be 480i, like my current It can television. be 480i or it can be 480p in what's called enhanced definition TV. 
And the two major resolutions you want to be aware of when you're shopping for high-definition TV are yeah. 720p, okay. which is progressive scanning, all 720 yep. lines, one after the other, and then 1080i. Which is better, 1080 interlaced or 720 progressive? Well, actually, 720p is the more demanding because all 720 lines are shown at the same time. So you would really want a TV that did 720p. You'll pay for it, too, because that's, that that's requires the, the highest scanning That's rate. the gold standard that that's you're looking for. That's the gold for. standard. Most of these TVs do 1080i. They will do 1080i, which means half those lines, uh, 540 lines, are shown in one pass. The odd followed by the even. Just now let's look also, another issue that you're going to, thank you, Bart, that was a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Another issue that's going to come up is the back of the TV, the TV with these connectors. Let's talk a little bit about, about them. Uh, S-Video, I know, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Well, lowest you, quality of these choices here? Well, this does not have composite video on it, but composite video is the lowest. That's the worst. And that's what we used to have on our TVs. Right. This is a projector which has S-Video, which is the next best. Okay. It has two conductors in there which carry the, uh, the color and the brightness on the two conductors. Then we have component video which carries the red, the green, and the blue separately, and the brightness is carried on the green. So in most cases, this is the best one to use as progress. This, this is what you would likely use with your, your current DVD player. Now what's this? It has a DVI. This looks like the one in the back of my computer. Right. This, this is the digital connection that's what is going to make the biggest change in our, our uh, viewing habits this year. And what it is, is it's a digital connection that will allow you to connect your digital high definition satellite box or cable box directly to your television and not have it be converted to analog in the process. So this digital all the way through right up to the final conversion. Digital all the way conversion. until you're viewing it right on the screen. If I'm buying a new TV it sounds like two things I should be looking for. Absolutely a DVI connector in the yes. back. Of course component. If it has DVI it will have component. It's likely to have component. 1080i minimum, but if I can afford it, 720p. Ask the questions, what is the highest resolution it will show? If it's 480i, it's just a conventional TV. Forget it. If it's 480p, it's an enhanced TV, okay. an enhanced definition TV. If it'll show 1080i, it's near the top of the high definition, but if it will actually display 720p, that's the best. And you like the three LCD projector panels the best of the, that's of the, the ones choices I like the that best. are out there right I can now. afford those. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Thank you very much, John. We appreciate it. My it's pleasure. It's so great. You've made us all clear. Of course, you've got to go to hometheaterhifi.com. There's a lot more to talk about. We just covered the bare bones, but at least we gave us a start, gave it a little start here. Stay where you are, folks. We're our final emails and faxes. A few final questions right after this quick break. Thank you. That was good. TV Day may, must, may be almost over, but the Screensavers continues a great show tomorrow. John Navis, who's our broadband expert, is going to show us his techniques for making a super high quality VCD. He says every bit as good as a DVD. Plus, you can make it with your CD burner. <laughs> we'll get to see you, Patrick, fly with the Blue Angels. And Patrick will pass out, but will not throw up. And hack your airport, because we don't believe in that on television. Hack your airport for faster wireless internet connectivity. Turn that B into G. Turn that frown upside down. We're going to yeah. show you how tomorrow on the screensavers. So frightening. <laughs> hey, uh, John made a good point. We yeah. were talking about this before the show. All of these newest TVs mm -hmm. have copy protection built in. Well, what does that mean, Leo? Well, it means that it, just like you have copy protection on your DVDs now so you can't burn them, they don't want you to take those digital signals coming in from the air and make movies out of them, make DVDs out of them. So if you don't have the copy protection on a TV, it's actually going to downsample the 480 interlace, which is pretty much the same stuff you're getting now. He po yeah, he pointed out that if you're going to get one with DVI, which you want, a DVI television, Part of the spec that they built in as you're coming in over this digital interface is if you don't have the copy protection, the guys putting in the signal will downsample it. They won't give you the highest quality. So if you want the highest quality HDTV, you have to buy the copy protection. Speaking of the, the guys putting the signal in there, Ralph reminds us that digital TV and HDTV are two different things. Yes. FCC wants all broadcasters to go digital. Lots of money for broadcasters. HDTV is not required. Lots more money. And analog TV is basically, you know what? It, it, you're right, Ralph. Good point. Not all programs are going to be broadcast in HDTV. Maybe someday, but certainly not anytime soon. Well, and as I said, I don't think we want this broadcast to be in HDTV. <laughs> See, every you? single pour <laughs> in Leo's forehead. <laughs> Anyway, HDTV is cool. Digital gives you other things like more channels per broadcaster. A lot of people are saying it's a spectrum grab, by the, and, it, and it's really a, a money grab. There's a lot more to talk about in that area, but that's it for our TV day on the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. Thank you for joining us tonight. We want to thank our guests, Rick Chesson and John Johnson. And for the rest of you, go watch some TV. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> I like that. <laughs>